All right. Well, of course, the story of the, you know, the very first black woman owning a mutual bank in South Africa is quite a, a positive one, welcomed. You know, most South Africans excited about it. But, of course, at the same time, there were questions and concerns raised, uh, particularly during a press briefing which was held yesterday of the Young Women in Business Network a Bank. The founder, Tabalendi Kodz, of course, hosted this uh, particular press briefing. And we'll be talking about it because it left uh, many people a bit confused around what actually is uh, the standing of the bank. I'm joined by my colleague, but also the business producer right here at ENC, Meli Tangalongulu, who also will give us some clarity. Good morning to you, colleague, and good to have you. Thank you. For those who perhaps haven't heard about Ntabeleng Dikotzi and what she's all about, only hearing now through the press briefing, who is she? So Ntabeleng is the founder of Young Women in Business Network, and they've basically started a couple of years ago this cooperative financial institution, which is now trying to upgrade into the mutual bank. And that's where the confusion actually starts to take place. Um, um, you see that with the co-op, it's usually a group of people that come together with a mutual understanding or, or idea of putting funds together or resources for um, the same benefit, basically. Mm -hmm. So that could be for starting a bank, or it's also it comes it derives from a stock fell. Right. You know, so you could say that it's a stock fell that's basically um, registered and also um, is according to the laws or regulations of the South African Reserve Bank. So it's a um, it's a it's a bouge, um, um, cooperation. Right. So that's where the confusion starts to take place now. Because in order for them now, she successfully ran so this co-op for five years. Um, we, you saw that she got 20 man, 21 million mm -hmm. and also in 20, 20, 21 million rand. And also in 2008 they had this march to the union buildings where they were actually just um, wanting a more representation of black women in the financial sector. And that's what's actually taking place now. Yeah. You know, so so she had this march, and then she wanted to apply for this mutual bank license so, so that um, the co-op could actually upgrade now to the next level. Right. Because in South Africa, we have three types of banks, I would okay. put it. So it's the co-op, which, which, which she is now currently running, and the mutual bank, which she would like to upgrade to, where we find that other banks are also taking part of that. Um, you, we've, she would, if she does successfully mm. get this license from the South African Reserve Bank, that would mean that she's part of the four. So VBS was one of them, which actually... Um, collapsed, as we know. Um, so that was under different reasons. That's for us for different reasons, right. which I wouldn't really like to touch on today. But then, obviously, so now, um, and then you get your commercial license. So if she does get this license from the South African Reserve Bank, then that will mean that in the future, should they have enough funds, they, they could then apply to actually have um, a commercial license. Yeah, because there were confusions around, you know, clarity on whether the bank exists or not. That's what I, that's the sense that I got from people. Yes. Because there was um, celebrations done, events hosted by the YWBN, um, you know, bank previously. Um, and she kept referring to an expensive letter. Just get, take us through that as well as, you know, the valuation um, process of the bank and where they are right now. So where they are right now is that um, she's trying to receive funding. So when she speaks of this expensive letter, this expensive letter is a letter of authority which she received from the South African Reserve Bank, which gives her the right to actually start putting the bank together or the process of the bank together. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's a bank holder. Mm. It gives her the right to actually say, okay... Um, We've, we can actually run a bank successfully. We've got the infrastructure. Um, so that's what she needs the money for at this point. So, then, so that she could go back to the Reserve Bank after a year and say, okay, this is how our bank is supposed, supposedly going to operate. Okay. So I just want to throw to a bite um, um, from yesterday where she actually explains what um, the existence of the bank is. Asking what do we bring to the table? We bring this expensive lead. We then talk into this new, this new bank that we want. We ask you to pour your money, which is the five billion, we pour them into this cup. Together with this expensive letter, with your money, we are now able to establish this mutual bank. So the question then becomes, but how are you establishing this bank? What do you need to establish this bank? All right, and I understand that there's more to this. I mean, that's why they're raising the five billion rand, right? Uh, she's saying that it's more of a share scheme. Yes, so basically. So members need a hundred rand to actually 
be part of this mutual bank or, or to be part of this initiative, right? So if you're part of this initiative, then, then it gives you the right. Let's say you're an SME holder, Dumelo, for instance, and mm. then you can actually apply for funding within that. But then if you're not a part of it, then you can't get funding from them. You know, so it doesn't really operate like a normal commercial bank. So I just wanted to us to touch on the valuation part of it, which she actually says that she needs five billion rand to actually establish the bank. Actually right. dilute it basically at five billion rand. So that what the concerns are with that. If she says the bank is valued at five at five billion rand, how did she get to that? That's the question. That is the question that everybody is asking. And secondly, if it's if you're saying that you're valuing the bank at five billion rand, right, and you're starting up this bank with right. five billion rand, and then you're going to be giving out this money, right, to supposed um, loan people that want loans, businesses right. that want loans, what happens then when that money runs out? Because we all know what the risks are when it comes to loaning. Um, SME, SMEs, and they've been data which has come out in the last couple of years okay. to, that shows that most SMEs um, um, they don't last a year, you know? So now it's a risk. It's high risk. That is what people are talking about. Like you want now, us now to put in money into a business um, for SMEs to be given money, right, for, for the, to run their businesses, yet they were rejected by other commercial banks. So now one of the issues that she's not bringing up and explaining to the public properly mm. is about the lending rate, at what percentage are you going to be lending right. these SMEs at? And secondly, um, if they've been rejected by other banks, that means they're high risk. So now the percentage, clearly, your, for your lending rate, it has to be higher. Okay. Yes. And right. there are also like credit regulation acts involved, that, you know, that we know that sometimes you cannot get credit because banks would reject you. So I just want us to actually just throw to that valuation bite that she actually speaks on. It is informed by the market. It is informed by the business plan. The business plan that we did research to say this market that we're going after, how much is it worth? It's worth 475 billion, right? If we want to make an impact and we want to serve these black businesses, how much do we need as a start? At least then it's 1.2% or 1.1%. That's, five, that's how we got to the 5 billion rand. It's not an evaluation of the business because remember, the bank does not exist. There is nothing there. It's just a shell. It's just you have a letter to say, go and establish, start this thing that is, does not exist. Melissa, we leave it there, but thank you so much for bringing us that clarity. And of course, that's around the uh, uh, Young Women in Business Network Bank, founded by Intabellin Dikotsi.